Hey, I'm back. Uh, Lexis K. Tyler, Celebrity Reads. This one was really, really getting interesting. It shut my whole phone down. So I had to put it back on the charger, literally turn it off, restart it. So I'm going to try to get into more of it. It looks like I'm not going to be able to finish the whole thing tonight. I will uh, come back in a few days and uh, finish it. I think, where was I, you guys? Thank you. I was determined to try to come back. It's getting really good. Uh, I'm really getting ready to try to break it down. I think, yes, that's where I was. I was talking about that footage, the footage fake. It doesn't match up to me. And I kept looking at it. I'm going to continue to look at it. It doesn't add up. Um, all of those parts are not Nipsey. Even... Though it looks like him, what I'm actually telling you is, and it looks like all those people are there, they took them and layered them in. Somebody doctored that footage and they changed the times on the footage. So you got one level of footage at the bottom going at one time, and then they put other footage on top of it um, that's going a, one's going faster and one's going in a slower sequence, and then you they put people in to the footage because when i watch it over and over and over i'm still not watching it the way it looks you're actually thinking this just was calmly standing there having a conversation and then somebody walks up without him knowing and just shoots him in the back then he's laying down you see two people over him and somebody digging down in his pockets and what i'm saying to you cowboy knew this was going to go on because they had been plotting it and i'm not saying he wanted it to go on i don't see he participated like direct but the nigga is an indirect shooter the nigga is an indirect killer no he didn't look like himself in those pics why because the time of death and the time of showing the body on that footage is two different times they were waiting there early in the morning and they were all surrounding the building i see one across the street this is what i saw when i drew this out crazy shit that didn't match that piece of tape I actually got my own pencil and paper and I drew it on the paper and I said, tell me, because I know that what's going on in the tape is not the absolute of what's going on in the spirit. That's when I saw two niggas look like Eric Ola. Same size, similar face shape, and haircut. Body type. It's another nigga that's round this here that looked just like Eric Ola ass. I don't believe he's the shooter. He's not the only shooter. That participate in this, but they only lock one person up. I saw him in the spirit. I saw what else did I see? Yes, a phone line. Y'all can tell me if it was ever there. Look like the telegram pole with the black line going across them. I seen some shoes thrown over with some tennis shoes, the laces tied together. If y'all see some shit around there, done seen some shit over there. Let me know, because like somebody had got a pair of shoes, tied the shoestring together, and throw them up on one section in that area of some damn phone wire. I seen that. I seen the nigga over there in the parking lot over there at the gas station. I seen another nigga at another gas station on the side of the building behind the tree eating a damn sandwich. I seen some niggas in there plotting and looking down there in the goddamn Master Burger. I seen another nigga on top of the roof on Marathon, and it looked like when you come up down that roof, like, uh, I guess I have to put a ladder or something in the back. It was up there. And on the right down on the corner, there was some type of little metal box that they, they, they had right there. Some type of electronic shit in the box. So I was tied to the security in the store, but I, I know they wouldn't stop anything because Nipsey secretly had another system in a bag up. I believe Granny. It was two times this shit happened. The attack, the shooting one time, then they showed me a gap in the time. Like around 11, between 9.30 and goddamn 11. Some shit went on. He showed me by the time 12 and 1, he was already laid out. I know that sounds crazy. Because they saying that's the exact time where he was shot. Not dead, though, at 2.53 o'clock, 3.30. But he was still breathing. 
I'm telling you some funny shit going on. I've seen two phases of this in the morning. And then close to afternoon, for about two, maybe three, two hours, three hours, he was laying somewhere, dying. They were holding him. Wiped him down. Ch cowboy chain clothes. Somebody else chained clothes and walked off like they hadn't done nothing. Pips was a nigga on the roof. Nigga in the back. And them other places I mentioned, nigga under one sitting in a car. A lady was there, two children. Nobody could see them. A girl and a boy. Boy the younger, two, three years old, somewhere like that. They crouched down. The lady's terrified. Nigga done told put a gun. Bitch, you ain't gonna say a motherfucking thing. This was inside the cars in the parking lot. Shit, you couldn't see. Shooters laying down on the ground where they could see Nipsey's feet, see the other niggas. They could hit you on the ground. I seen that at an angle. It was so much. The shit. I had to back up this shit because I'm just like, am I really seeing what the fuck I'm seeing going on? Okay. It's two things going on. Because, and that's why I'm saying the house of ill repute because of the dirty shit that was going on down there. And I see the police watching the whole thing. They had been down there watching. They were spying on Nipsey. But the other niggas was with it and was informing. They was watching them do shit. But they were trying to catch Nipsey up and tie Nipsey up into the shit. Nipsey wasn't directly in that. He really didn't want to be in that. He didn't want that up there. But this guy, the big one I'm telling you about, was mad at Nipsey and very jealous of Nipsey and want what he have and feel like you or to us, we family, you're going to let us eat off of you. This is the way that this is supposed to go. We're going to run this operation out of here. We're going to keep running. He said, no, this has got to stop now. Like right now, I can't do this. I'm going to lose everything. They're blaming me and coming down on me. The guy is saying he does not care. This is what you owe. This is what you're going to do. You're going to pay. And he said, not like that. And he said, no, just like that. That's how you're going to pay, nigga. That's what you're going to do. They want to tax on different ways with this dope, the scamming, the robbing, the prostitution, the selling and using that place right there in that whole era. It's going, and not just there. It go around the era and around the goddamn block and down the street. That whole era hot like a motherfucker. This one guy here, they got people loyal to him, younger people that are killers and shooters and robbers. They, they, under, and they, this is crew. And Nipsey knew all of them, and he said, I don't want to do this no more, y'all. So he made up his mind, that who attack? Yes, baby, that who attack? And so the guy said, well, this is what we're going to do. Told Cowboy he wanted to kill Nipsey. He was very angry at Nipsey. But let me tell you who else was angry at Nipsey. Cowboy. I, I wrote this long letter out here, and I'm not going to try to read it all to you because I don't know how this phone going to echo. Who is it tripping? I said the big guy is a gang member. He's over a particular set. That's why I said it was earlier. Tall, big, low hair, bald hair. He was talking to Cowboy. They all knew each other from back in the day. But Nipsey pulled up on the start over and still want to believe in Cowboy, even though he didn't trust Cowboy. And he know Cowboy will own that fucking shit. Cowboy's a junkie. Cowboy's a liar. Cowboy's conflicted. He got character flaws. He cannot be trusted because he was setting this up with this nigga. And the guy told Cowboy... If you don't, I'm going to kill you. If I can't have what I want, he think he's going to go on and move away. He's too big for us now. He won't let us tax him. He owe us. I will kill you. I will kill him. I will shoot this motherfucker down. And I will burn this fucker down to the goddamn ground. Cowboy didn't tell Nipsey this, but Nipsey already knew it was a problem. And then threat started. Oh, thank you for reminding me because this guy is connected to Big U. Some type of way. This guy that I saw is connected to Big U. And Cowboy is scared, but he cannot tell Nipsey. And then Cowboy's angry with Nipsey. Uh, I write this letter of getting in Cowboy's mind. The shit is crazy because he is saying, you owe me. You know, you used to look up to me. You was my little homie. You used to respect me. How I used to go out of my way for you and uh, even do things at first your mom and daddy wouldn't do. And they didn't even believe in you. And you was at my house and I invested in you. I helped you. You was like my son. And now you... 
you know, and say he got in trouble and he said he knew he was a fuck up. He knew he had done wrong things. He knew he was still on drugs. He couldn't shake it. He weak for the drugs. He said, but you didn't have to disrespect me like that. He said that the way Nipsey would talk to him, they would get in some type of arguments or conflict when Nipsey would get on Cowboy for doing fucked up shit and try to tell him about how to handle the stole, how to handle people, how to run a business. He held this and felt like Nipsey thought he was better than him and was looking down on him and was talking down on him and disrespecting him and didn't look at him as a big homie that he, he, see Cowboy gets high, his thinking's not good, his emotions not balanced, Cowboy's paranoid, he thinks everybody's out to get him, everybody disrespectful, everybody don't like him because this is how he feels about himself, there's a lot of self-hatred, a lot of shame and a lot of embarrassment, I'm saying he even has issues with his family. And the way they deal with him or see him or don't deal with him because of dirty things he's done. So he's saying that Nipsey always insults him. Nipsey laughs at him and puts him down. And I don't believe Nipsey did that. That shit was in his mind. He wanted Nipsey to sign him to a record label. He said when he went places with Nipsey, Nipsey, why couldn't you have had me as an artist up there on stage with you rapping and getting the same fame and recognition that you getting? He said he supposed to drive the cars. Nipsey drive. He said Nipsey supposed to have gave him a whole stove. Not managing that one and said Nipsey didn't pay him the money he should have paid him. Said Nipsey should have got him his own stove. He should have had the same house, the same car, the same lifestyle as Nipsey. And said that Nipsey was very disrespectful to him and didn't want to give it to him. He even tried to rationalize in his mind and said maybe Nipsey's scared he going to get ahead of him. Like maybe he just got, got just as much swag as Nipsey or more and that Nipsey was going to be jealous that he was going to get ahead of him. I mean, I'm in this guy's head and it reminds me of a fucking fifth grader, a child. Very childish, very emotionally immature in the head and he is feeling this way towards Nipsey and saying that Nipsey's holding him back and feeling, hey Jessica, I'm feeling like if he could get Nipsey out of the way, then he could finally get his day in the sun, his shine, his records in the stove, a big fan base online, that he could become a superstar. He has delusions of grandeur. He still cannot get over not being able to do it when he was a young man and fucking his life up and then out of prison and on that shit and still on that goddamn shit and still as a fucking sexual deviant and two-faced and a goddamn liar. The nigga's real conflicted. Because when I was looking in his mind, I mean, the stuff he was saying... I'm just listening to what I am writing, and I don't believe what I am writing. This this guy seems really, really crazy and extremely jealous of Nipsey, but hurt by Nipsey because Nipsey actually made his dream come true, and he was embarrassed because Nipsey was younger than him and still made his dream come true out of all the hell that he had been through. So, and, and, and I wonder if somebody could tell me, or I probably have to look it up or something. There have been a lot of deaths around that area. A lot of people killed. A lot of people doing drugs. A lot of people assaulted. A lot of people damaged. And it was gang shit. Some of it was gang on gang. But it was other stuff. Civilian, too. That things have been going on there. And I'm seeing gang members around that that were very injured around that. This was not all civilian shit. This was within the gang family. Their organized crime, punishment, and things that were done. Or somebody, they want, I mean, the way I see these people... They attack their own family members. Like the these gang members attack their own family members and think nothing of it. It could be jealousies. You think somebody's going to get more of you than you. Somebody's talented. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be anything serious all the ways for them to do each other this way. Because I see what they did to Nipsey. And I'm saying this is about territory, like sovereign territory, jurisdictions, landmarks land designated areas that they had marked off and all of them had particular duties and had a jurisdiction to reign over and certain things they were supposed to do in that thank you star lots of murders around there for years thank you because i can see all the strains of blood there and when nipsey didn't want to do that that guy wanted to take over that area the tall big guy brown or dark brown with the head scant or the head cut real real low and Cowboy still allowed this to go on under the radar, but then he felt like, well, I got to pull back. We got to do something because Cowboy felt like Nipsey out of the way was going to open opportunities for him. And this guy had lied to him, made promises to him. And then this guy is attached to Big U. So I don't, he had to know that this was going on because too many people, police and gang members were watching that air as a hot spot. And they knew it could be a lot of money there and they were making the money. And then Nipsey was saying, no, this absolutely has to stop. And 
Let's see, what did I say yeah, about that murder? And I believe, yeah, some of that higher and higher video. Because go back and look at that higher and higher video again. You see the gang in the shootout starts to happen in that video. And you see the way Nipsey's looking. You see the way DJ Khaled is looking. Like, they know something we don't. And I'm hearing Nipsey get death threats. I'm wondering, was it the phone, the text, that we picked it up, you hear this voice. He was getting threatened, and I believe Nipsey knew who it was, at least from that group. Now, that's just the one group that I'm telling you about. There were two groups of people here, and I'm telling you, I keep seeing another race. I keep picking up Asian. And we know there are different groups of ethnic groups. So there's Japanese, Korean, and Chinese. I don't get the Korean. And I'm wondering, is that Korean that owned that plaza that sold it to Dave Gross and Nipsey? I don't get strongly Japanese. I get Chinese. Just like somebody tried to correct me, I think it was a week ago, and I said I keep picking up Asian Chinese. And they said, well, the people that owned the building were Korean. They're still Asian, but I did not say that the people that own the building, well, basically that proves what I said about an Asian presence, but I did not, and I will say right now, the Asians that sold it to them didn't do this. They had nothing to do with this. And let me tell you what happened to me a couple of nights ago. That lady was bothered by what I was saying in here to myself and with the spirits of Nipsey and what I was writing. She came into my bedroom. She did something I've never seen before. She walked up the steps and walked into my bedroom. And she said, let me talk to you because uh, you keep talking about you see this Asian presence. And she said, it is. But it ain't me. Now, I don't know if it's an Asian lady that had something to do with owning that plaza and selling it to Nipsey now. But it's a woman in it and she know what happened, what was going on. And she know what they were going through before it got to this point. Before David Gross came in the picture. And how they was harassed and he was locked up and shit and raided and stuff thrown all around and fucked up. She knew about that. So I just laid back on the bed. I said, yes, ma'am. You can go ahead on and talk and you can stay. Because I feel your spirit and I know you don't have no evil intent toward me. But I know you want to set my ass straight. So baby said it. I'm going to lay back. Go on and talk. She said, yeah. She could at the end of my bed. She said, look. I ain't got nothing to do with this. So don't put my name in it. My name Emmett and I ain't in it. We didn't do that. She said, I know about the building and the owners of the building. They had nothing to do with that. They didn't want to do nothing to him. She said, a lot of them are taught to be racist. She said, but we're not and we want to help them. We like them. She said, I like Nipsey. She said, but I know who you talking about. I said, yeah, you do. She said, yeah. She said, it, it was Asian connection. So then she had a red dress on. That made me think about The Matrix, where Lauren Fishburne turned Neo, watched the one with the red dress. Neo turned his head. He said, "You what you looking at? You looking at the lady with the red dress? He said, no. I, he said, look again. He turned his back, and it was Mr. Smith pointing that gun in his face. He said, you see what I'm saying? Nothing is ever as it seen. It's all an illusion. She stood there with a red dress on, like the lady had on The Matrix. She pulled her dress up for me. She had some white panties on. And when she pulled the dress up, I seen something I ain't never seen before. This motherfucker here had writing all on both of her goddamn legs and all over her fucking stomach. It looked like uh, calligraphy. She had a whole, all this, the whole torso and shit wrote on, tattooed on. It wasn't writing like temporary. This shit was drawn in and it went down into the layers of her skin. That black, it was black ink, beautiful. It looked like calligraphy to me, like Chinese. I don't know, y'all can think I'm crazy if you wanna. I, I have to keep saying it because I keep fucking seeing it. This shit is strong, not strong, strong on me. Ah, I must it. And then that lady came in my house. What'd she say? Let's find out what the hell she started talking to me. I had to finish, I told her to come back, excuse me, that we said country, come back, come back, I want to, I want to see what else you have to say, she said, she said that was a code, that's the way, that was a private oath they take, it's certain messages when they have that on their body, so she was a part of a 
special secret set. I got to read more about it. What came up to me, and I was talking to one of my friends, she said, girl, that's Mulan. I said, what Mulan? She said, that, that, that cartoon. She said, she had that shit wrote on her body underneath her clothes, too. I said, what? Okay, I got to go watch Mulan. That's a cartoon. I think by watch Walt Disney, you can see some of the excerpts on YouTube. So I didn't get to see it. She said, that's, that's, that's what she trying to tell you. So she said they pray and call their ancestors and draw the letters in their skin. Beautiful artistic writing that they put on the skin. And the ancestors call me help them. So I knew there was some spiritual shit going on there because I ain't never seen that. Didn't know nothing about it. And the lady felt comfortable to come tell me. She said she has no problems with Nipsey. And she wanted to merge in the business deal. They, she wanted to continue to do business with him. But then she said it was the DA. Nancy Hager, who had a secret deal, you hear me? Now, y'all can find something out, let me know. Said they got a secret deal with the white men that loaned them money to give it to her from three different directions and funnel it through the underworld organized crime. That's what the Asian lady told me. I, I got to go back and get some more, because I'm trying to, it's so much, y'all, that I'm trying to get, okay, so let me go, I mentioned about y'all the twin. I mentioned in the barbershop some re real weary shit. I seen a barber come at the shop. He, he, he looked like a barber. He came down there. I don't know. And I seen him near the T-Mobile. Some barbers. I don't know how many barbers there were that day. Y'all have to tell me, but I see a barber in this shit. Which take me back to what y'all saying. This is between... <laughs> Star, why you talking about child? It's too much. How you think I goddamn feel? When they come in here and did that, that lady came, she said, now look. Nah. So I listened to, she was cool, I like her. Because she didn't have no animosity in that. She's like, don't get me fucked up in this shit. Now this will misunderstand that it ain't me. I said, yes, ma'am. And then when she showed me that, I said, wow. Oh, my God. It was so pretty. I have to go back and study what she, because you know what I'm saying? She broke the code, because that's some secret shit. You know, everybody don't know about that goddamn shit. But she said she liked him. She liked Nipsey. And it bothers her what happened to him. She ain't nothing to do with that. I said, I know. I could tell she didn't. But she don't drop that shit about that lady down there, that D.A. I don't want to get in that shit. I mean, you see all this shit tied together and this all the dirty shit and organized families and shit and organized crime? Okay. Let me look back at my picture. That woman in that, that what is that little bug she was in? That little car, she jump out and she do her hand like this. I'm not talking about her, baby. It's another one. Didn't look like a nigga was in the car with her. Something she was doing when she got out, ran away from the car when the shooting started, was doing like this, like she cutting her throat. Then she come back, which is weird. Somebody shooting, you ain't got no gun, you scared, and you come back and get back in there. Some, I could, it was a nigga, it was some, she had somebody in there. It was a nigga coming through the cut that got back in. He low. <sighs> then, okay. Yeah, I told y'all with a different place I seen him, and then it was a car. I seen the car in the alley. And then right there by that alley on one side of that store, it's a fence, like a wall on the fence with that gas station where they deal with that nigga under there sitting, waiting because he, you know, he had time. He had to wait the nigga eating a salmon. So I don't know if they gave the nigga one of them damn uh, master burger or what. Hi, my beautiful brother. But the nigga was under there. It was two cars with bitches in them that to cover the niggas. And one of the nigga I told you with the baby, he had that, the gun right there. He first was in the car. And then he got out of there and put it. He said, you better not say a motherfucker thing. You're going to stay right here in this car till I tell you to go. He said, when I go, if you don't want nothing to happen to that little girl back there, then you're going to keep your fucking mouth closed. You understand me? Like they live together. The nigga fucks with the bitch. That's what I seen. They know each other. And she was just like, I cannot believe I'm seeing it. I can't believe y'all doing this to Nipsey. He said, yeah, well, you ain't going to tell nobody you can't believe it, bitch, because something might happen. So I'm seeing shit like that. 
And as you know, that ain't in the goddamn tape we looking at when Nipsey get assassinated. There's some shit underneath that I'm seeing. Once I forgot, Nipsey said, move the tape back. Take it out your mind. Forget it. Now, just look at the stove and tell me what you see. And he starts throwing shit, popping up. And what I'm telling you is what I see. Then I can bother me about the, 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 the two Eric Holders moving around. They choreographed the shit. Then they was at the, the Master Burger. They choreographed the shit. And then the, the, you see, go back and look at that footage. When they shoot Nipsey, two of them go that way and run in that stove real quick, run out, then go out through the alley. I've been working on this so long because I had to keep looking and looking and listening to Nipsey and listen to the other spirit come in. The spirit came in that was controlling time and that holds time. He the one told me about the break in the sequence of time, not just in the video on purpose, but in the time when Nipsey was shot, when he was assassinated, he was still breathing. Now, I do feel that he didn't die right off. He's strong, and they got to fight. Okay, the one I told you, the big one with the game, he had made up his mind. I, they, the cowboy, and they helped lure Nipsey down there on a lie. To get him down now by himself. He was in one of them places and I don't care what nobody say. I see him in that marathon. You know they said it was goddamn close. It was his though. And I seen Cowboy down in there. The killer, like I said in April. I said that killer was in the back of that damn stove. And Nipsey seen the killer. Now, I understand they're saying it only happened in the barbershop. I'm not saying he wasn't in that goddamn barbershop, but I'm telling you, the shit jumped off. He went in that marathon, and he saw that killer. Because if you go back to April, it's my first tape, and I say he was laying on the ground. And animals from Eurytra, his ancestors rushed over here. I saw the black and red spitting cobra. I saw the black and red spitting snake, and I saw the ant from Eurytra in Ethiopia. It got off Nipsey's body and walked through the blood and it walked into the marathon for me and showed me blood on the floor and it was something. It was a mirror on one of them walls. They climbed around it so I could see through there. That was in the front, okay, where I could see something. And then it was in the back. I get some kind of mirror somewhere towards the middle of the back. And then it's a back door. It's something back there in that goddamn back. I'm telling you, but there was a man, a big one. This is where I'm confused at because it don't, that thank you, baby. It's still up there so nobody can't say, oh, you heard that somebody told you. Nobody told me a month where well, they did, but it wasn't uh, physical because I said that in April. Just like I said about them, that boy was shot with two bullets and with two guns. But I didn't say it was the same shooter. I said it was two damn shooters. And then them came out with the fuck I said. Yet they formed a grid on that. And then I said they walked in the store. And I said that I seen Cowboy in the store. I even seen Eric holding that store. I seen Nips at that store standing by that door. Like standing toward that front of it. I didn't see him go all the way in the back. Nips was towards the front. He might have walked in. A, a toy the stove, but he didn't go all the way in the back. The killer was that way. I seen him look and he felt some funny shit. He looked at Cowboy and then Cowboy started moving that way. Or one of them, I don't know if it was Eric, what I remember what I was saying. They were standing right there. One was by the counter, one was right there. And then they started looking that way. And Cowboy started looking funny. Then when he looked at back there, Nipsey started feeling that like he was getting ready to get killed. And that he was being set up. And when he looked at them two and he looked in the back, he saw the killer. Now I'm finna say some real crazy shit that I believe that snuck up on him. Nipsey didn't see the face of the killer like he thought he saw. Do I have it in here? Something I want to show y'all. When I, the first thing I started reading Cowboy let me tell you what came up. Two masks. 
And I know y'all don't see what I'm talking about. One got a happy face and one got a sad face. They are two theater masks. Asian masks, but the ones I started looking at more got white faces. These two masks are called Melpomene and Thalia. Twin face theater masks. Happy and sad. Comedy and tragedy. Theater masks. Somebody thought it was funny to do this. And somebody was very sad about it. And this cowboy with his two-faced motherfucking ass. That tells me not only was cowboy wearing a mask of sadness and tragedy. A part of him also felt it comedy. Because he wanted Nipsey dead. He was so jealous of him. He was so much resentment and anger. But the killer had a mask. Not the black one that I'm talking about. There's another one that you don't see. It's a white face underneath. Yes, the court jester was there. And also the demon I talked to you all about, Pennywise, which would be Abaddon. He was there. And this was Trix, the Joker. You know, the clown likes to play games. For some reason, I don't know why. And I keep seeing these different blood types. RH negative is not a popular blood type for, yes, for ethnic groups. That would be a European one, and then some Asians have it too, but I think it's higher. I have to go back. I think it's Chinese. It's higher. And then, you know, they have mixtures with white people. And like some blacks get it because they have mixture with white people in their family. If you're not half white, half black, you got an ancestor in there. And they're even saying these come from North Africa. So they probably have some African in them they don't want to discuss. But that also comes from the continent of Africa. Am I saying that right? That's the continent. Um, I know you're going to think I'm crazy. But for some reason it keeps coming up. There was a foreign shooter. That shooter was not a part of this. It was a separate hit to make sure. And the other ones were in agreement with this. This person came in from somewhere else, like flew in, drove. They flew, then they drove. Then they drove, and then they flew. Out. You'll never see them. Nobody knew. Do you all remember that video you saw when that Asian lady dressed up like a black person? Not dressed, but did her skin, her makeup, and her hair, and she looked like a black person? Do you remember that white man that robbed those banks and his white girlfriend said that it's not a black man with a big nose and big lips and nappy hair? That is my boyfriend. And they didn't believe her at first till they caught him because the silicone mask was so thin. And they're more real now. He was looking like a, a nigga robbing banks. He looked exactly like one. And do you remember the Asian girls? You can find it on Facebook and YouTube. She looks just like a black girl. A pretty black girl. Actually, she looked better as a black girl than she did at that damn Chinese. Her hair, she put that wig and everything on. You could not tell. I know that y'all think I'm on that shit. I ain't going to say this no more. He came up from the back. I'm not saying the other people didn't shoot him. I know this sounds crazy what I'm saying. Someone higher up with a lot of money and had a lot to gain off of this had the other white face motherfucker come in there that dressed in black face. I'm shut up. I'm, I, I know. I, sh I shouldn't even told y'all. Cause I know y'all gonna think. I, it just keep coming to me. Y'all know I've always said this. He snuck up on him. That's why I know. If this is on day. They won't see what I see. Because he's protected and disguised. Let me tell you something what makes me think of this. And it's going to make you think of it too. The last, the death scene for Scarface. Tony Montana, Al Pacino. 
Do you remember that? All of those Spanish or people that come from other races, I mean, come, they're in the same race, come from other countries. Remember when the wealthy businessman that Tony was dealing with said, don't fuck me. And you're going to kill that politician and you're going to kill that baby. You're going to blow that car up, kill everybody in there so they won't testify against me. And Tony said, fuck that, I don't kill children. And he shot the assassin that was in the car with him. And then, what was in Bogota? Was he in Colombia? He sent the Colombians over to kill him. So those were all people of Latin descent. You could tell they were not white people. All of those, remember, they came over the fence. They surrounded the house. They started shooting. And Tony was snowing that power he done got so geeked up he can't even feel no shots. He get up and he goes to the balcony of his room and he's outside shooting. I throw in my thunder. You fuck with me, you fuck with the bed. And they shooting. He got about a hundred bullet holes. Nigga still standing on field and on that shit. Remember what happened? The one you didn't see coming. The white face. Gets the rope quiet. Climbs up on the rope, quietly tips down on the balcony with the shade song. That's the only white face in the house. Tips up slowly, and then you see all the Latin ones, they submit to the white man. They get quiet and tell them wondering why nobody's shooting. They stand and still, this nigga blows his fucking spine out. The white one that nobody saw. They knew and they saw him, but Tony did not. I am telling you, I saw some crazy shit like that that you, you can't, they could not see the white face underneath. Now there, you can see the video, there was a white man. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about a white face, non-white man. And let me tell you something funny, weird, like funny, weird, like not haha. -ha. I got all these symbols I can't go into right now because I know it's getting late. And for some reason, you said they cut my goddamn phone off and I was getting into it a few minutes ago. This picture in my mind comes of a monkey with goggles. I started to Google, I said a monkey with goggles. There are pictures with monkeys with goggles. All over the internet. You can actually buy them. I knew it wasn't that. It was something else. I keep looking and looking. Guess what I find? Military shooters. Military shooters wear goggles or that's when you put the glasses over a lens or a glass over another lens. They call it monkey goggles. There are military shooters. When they practice and to perfect what they're doing, they wear a form of monkey goggles. Somebody there was also military. That's how I know. Look it up if you think I'm lying. There were professional shooters. Now, not the gang members, but someone else high up from another hit. There was blood everywhere. I don't know what happened to it. Well, I know what happened to it. You know what happened to it. This was all staged. It was reenacted, and then the tape was doctored to throw you off and make you think it was what you what you saw. It was. I'm not gonna go no further into this. I feel very uncomfortable. I think I've given you enough, like you always do, to look at things and find things for me. Because when the footage just went out on me, when I was trying to explain to y'all what I was seeing, someone sent me, an, one of the girls that's watching the video now, sent me, uh, was it a screenshot? Was it of Cowboy? I don't want to lie, so tell me if I'm wrong. Was it Cowboy talking about the marathon and promoting Nipsey? And what I'm telling you is I'm not directly accusing Cowboy, um, but I, I am saying he was involved and he's not going to tell. 
because he was promised money and benefits and he got some. I think that's true, but it's not going to last in Cowboy's career. It's not going to go anywhere. He's not going to have any good luck for what he done. You do that to your friend and now people are like, wow, now that he's dead, I didn't know I would miss him so much. This guy was so full of rain. That's what happened that day was meant to happen that day unless Nipsey had backup because he was coming there to confront him violently with a gun and kill him. It was a fight first. It first started off as a confrontation and this was more problem for them they didn't like because Nipsey argued back and Nipsey talked back and was trying to fight back and then he kept pointing down to his navel on the side of the navel. It was a shot, like, boom. But I'm wondering, was any guns having silencers? He showed me on two sides of the stomach. One side of the navel, like a little bit lower down. And what I'm telling you is, and I know too, you're going to think this is crazy. He was shot with some type of tranquilizer. God damn it. All them wasn't bullets. That he was shot with. Some of them might have been trick guns, blank guns, but what I seen, it it almost looked like a dart, but it had a like a hyperbaric needle. I know y'all looking at me fucked up. I seen it before, but I didn't want to see the shit. I I seen it maybe a month or so ago. Saw him on IG7 on Relief Music. Child, it's a dirty motherfucker. You hear me? You do that to your friend. They shot him with that first. Because people wondered, and I wondered, I don't want to say it. They said, well, how he, why he didn't run? Why he didn't move? How they get, because cause that scene you see there is is not the real scene. Where he's just standing there, relaxed, and get shot. It's laid over. Something had happened before that. God damn. Y'all see what I'm talking about? One thing I will goddamn say. Try to hold it a few more four minutes. Few, few, few more goddamn minutes, y'all. Let you look at this candle because he liked that one. Is that said so no? Because it all makes sense. They shot him. That's why he couldn't fight and run because he was fighting. He like and one thing that bothered me. When when cowboy, I'm gonna tell you something, and I don't want to say this. Lord have mercy. He said. Nilsa was fighting, 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 and I told him to fight and hold on. And I was holding him, and now he was bleeding up on the hill, and I got blood all over me, but you never see no blood. This nigga done changed about two or three times. He was always clean. And he's, you know, I, I told him to, to fight and, 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 and hold on. No, I heard him say, and I heard that other one say, didn't I tell you I was going to get you, nigga? Didn't I tell you that I was going to get you? See, it was the other way around. They talking about Nipsey say, oh, you got me. You got me. No, he didn't say that. He said, didn't I tell you that I was going to get you, nigga? Because he had been one of the ones that was threatening him. And had been in the stove plotting and doing dirty shit with Cowboy got down mad because it was a house of ill reproof and a house of ill fame. And he was given the assignment to come over there and do that shit, which is also a legal word. And I looked up assignment tied to a house of ill reproof. He was told to do that shit. When Cowboy was holding him, I heard Cowboy say some shit like this. Nip, Nip, don't make it hard on yourself. Nip, just go on. Stop fighting, Nipsey. Don't fight. Like when he said he was fighting, he was fighting. No, he was telling him, don't. Cowboy was help trying to kill him. Lord, forgive me. He saw the life coming out of Nipsey and telling Nipsey to go on that. Nipsey, you making it worse. Stop trying to fight him because see, they had ambushed him so bad they surrounded him that that guy knew he was coming to do that to him. Start an argument, start a confrontation, and with a gun, start a violent complication with blood on the floor. Oh, they trying to say the shit was just outside, and it wasn't. And I am wondering about that barber shop now because I seen that barber come down the sidewalk by that goddamn T-Mobile and talk to one of them niggas that were in it. I wonder was it Bobbles working that day? If it was, how many? Yes, he was telling them, you know, fight. No, he was telling them, don't fight. 
because the nigga was looking at him like, if you don't, if he don't, I'm going to make you shoot him. Cowboy didn't want to do that. I'm telling you how dirty this shit went. I don't think they want us to know how dirty this shit really went. Nipsey's not that type. They're going to sit there and say, ah, you got me, you got me, lay back. He was taking that shit like a man. He was trying to fight, and then he's like, boom, they shot him with some drug. Yes, they called Sam. Sam ain't telling y'all everything because that shit tearing that boy up. That boy going to live with that for the rest of his life because he saw what we didn't. And he didn't have nothing to do with it. He saw that shit. He know. He ain't going to tell us. And they ain't going to let us see it. I'm sure they got the unedited. So go and tell all of them. They need to. They need to. I'm telling you what I think is so fucked up. And I'm listening to this. I said, what? I said, you want me to say that? He said, yeah. I want people to know. If 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 I'm if, if I'm hearing correctly, he say I want people to know what happened to me. I have some more here, but it's long, y'all, and it's phone. As you see, and I don't know why they doing me like this. Something else I'm gonna say right quick. He was showing me the liver damage to him. He showed me there was a shooter to the left going like at a sharp angle like this. And there was one to the right going a sharp angle like that. Shot him in the stomach. And one of them, I'm seeing, went through to the back. The, but I also see, they talking about the one place in the spine was shot and tore the spinal cord. No, I see a crack in more than one place in the spinal cord column the back bone and he was telling me that his celiac artery was damaged now the celiac it was either toe or something that that is the artery the celiac artery let me tell you supplies oxygenated blood to the liver stomach abdominal esophagus spleen and the superior half of both the duodenum and the pancreas, the mid gut and the hind gut. This, these bullets, what he's saying to me, if I'm getting it right, must have went in, in that baby guts. Okay. And they must not have got them all out. Because he was saying that by the stomach and his intestine. They must not have got all the bullets out of there. If it's if I'm seeing and hearing it correctly, some in his stomach. And then at one point when they say, I don't know if Nipsey could call because he was strong. He hung on for a long time until they isolated him. They isolated that baby. He couldn't talk. So he was, he was doing like that with Cowboy. And Cowboy was like, Nipsey, just stop. That's what bothered me. He was telling him, stop trying to talk. Just go, just let go. Nip, just let go. He was even thinking about doing this. He couldn't really say a lot of words to his brother. Because they was there. Cowboy was in that shit. I'm not saying he started it, but still. You went along with it because you scared and what you were doing. And then you don't, you won't tell the police. But then again, I don't know. He might have told him. He might have told him. He watched that man die. He was still breathing for a while. He was, he couldn't really move, but he was breathing, and he was talking. And I was like, Nips, I can't take this. You want me to say this? And he said, I want them to know. And I'm just like, what? Y'all, I could be getting this wrong. I'm going to go back. I'm going to look at this. Because it's so dirty. 
is so many people, and they all, they disliked him. When they was helping to shoot him, they disliked him. With their leader, the big nigga I'm telling you about, because he wouldn't go along with this shit no more. And they felt like he owed them too, and they want to eat off of Nipsey. So when they saw that they couldn't do it, and the shit was over, they was glad to shoot him. They want to destroy everything that boy built. Because they feel like he owed them. They supposed to let him come in and out there and do what the fuck they want to do. So they, they, they made sure he wasn't leaving that day. He wasn't leaving alive. And then Cowboy Comlin went in there, composed himself, changed his fucking clothes. Oh, this just was some jealousy. One nigga, you know, did, well, he wasn't listening to rap tape. You know. From what they told me, the story I'm telling y'all and the story he telling don't match. This shit been so hard on me. I ain't even want to get up here in front of the camera and say this goddamn shit. Because I said, I know they're going to think I'm on dope. They say this bullshit. I ain't even told y'all. Uh, he's here. Uh, the Black Panther. Now let me tell you something. I heard this. Y'all, I don't know it's true. They said that girl, Ebony, that drive that goddamn car for Eric to come over there and shoot, supposed to be pregnant. By Eric Garner. The, the, the panther came in here the other day, and she had a leopard with her. It was a panther, the leopard, and the puma. And she had a baby. It kind of looked like a puma or a jaguar underneath there. Baby, some of the ones ain't going to never. This ain't going to come out. Because somebody had paid for the top ones. I believe some of them going to come out. Some of them going to get caught, but not the major ones. Unfortunately, we're not going to see justice for all this right now. I'm not saying maybe not in the future. As long as he want me to look at it, I'll look at it and see what we see. But I saw death around that girl and that baby. Or I saw the baby. I sure did, Nikki, but I thought it was uh, Lauren. I thought it was somebody closer to Nisha. They saying that girl pregnant, Ebony, that drove the car for Eric. And they was back out there having some type of disagreement as well because she was pushing that murder up. She. It, and they was fucking. They had fucked that day. They fucked some few days up to it. She had like she didn't know him. She's a damn lie. She might have been pregnant then unless they let him have conjug conjugal visits in now. And uh, for some reason, the panther showed me like the baby was sucking from her breast. And then all of a sudden, the panther turned to stone and got real hard and was dead. Just hard as a rock. And the baby was still trying to suck from the breast of a stone. Which showed the mother didn't have a life or something happened to the life. And the baby couldn't suck from a breast. I don't know what's finna happen, but I seen death on her ass too. Behind this here. She was up with that shit, sucking that nigga dick. Plotting to assassinate Nip. That's what I seen. Now, uh, this phone, now you know me holding this goddamn phone with this one goddamn hand. I ain't finna cut it, plus I think it's late. Probably after two. What I'm gonna do. I will try to come back in a couple days. I need to find out if y'all know about the coat day. What this coat day is this week. Who is it about? Because I see the coat. And I see the plotting. And I see the enemies. I see the lawsuit. And the disagreements in it. And the negotiations and rene renegotiation. Disagreement. Something to go on. Just don't know which one of them. Is it about the little girl? Or is it uh, something about Nipsey and Eric? Y'all let me know. Because I don't. I don't know which one that it is. And I'll come back. I see it coming up. As well as the enemies in the camp. Okay. So, this they, they tripping on me real bad tonight. With this Facebook and keep shutting my shit down. <sighs> Boy. I'll see what else you have to say. And I'll do my best to come back to you this week. I didn't even do no readings for nobody else the past couple of weeks. I want to have energy. To, to do this for you. Because baby if I'm real drained and wiped out. I can't get on tape. I be damn leaning. So. 
I know y'all will look at this for me, get into investigation, you hear things, you'll bring it back to me. If I don't hear about it first, I'll see it. And I keep doing my best trying to get at this and give you accurate information. Okay? So, I love y'all. Thank y'all for supporting me. And thank you for your love and donations. Y'all really came through and looked out for me. I got to get out of the house now and get me some soul food and stuff. <laughs> y'all so sweet. Some people was like, I got all I got is $5. All I got $10, 20 Go down there and get you some chicken and stuff and gravy. <laughs> y'all really did look out for me. Let me know. Don't y'all stop it. Don't you better not stop talking to this. You better not stop the readers. We love you. We love the readers. Here's some money. This is the best I can do right now. Please don't stop. Come back. Go get you some soul food. <laughs> so that's what I, <laughs> I ain't really got it yet. But I'm gonna go and 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 I'm glad that y'all looked out for me and and had had my back. I, I wish I could stay longer. I know I didn't mean to start so late. My phone was tripping, so I know it's something off because the energy started tripping and kept the phone kept going down before I got on here. And now that I'm on here, you see what they did and they just went out talking about the area was bad, the reception was bad. I stopped fucking with Popeyes a long time ago because you know that stuff make you look old. That Popeyes, all that fried chicken and that nasty grease and that white flour wrinkles the skin. It clogs your bowels and stuff up. I've been let fried food go. I love fried fish and fried chicken, but baby, I don't fuck with it. Because it'll tear you up from the inside out. And that stuff nasty. See? So, I I really, I don't, yeah, I don't I don't eat them chicken salad. I love Chick-fil-A, but I don't eat them fried chicken salad. They are delicious. The only thing I like from Chick-fil-A is the uh, salads. And I love the fries. That's the only fried thing I have a weakness for. I love french fries. I love potatoes. But, you know, I can't even do those. Hey, Linda. I'm trying to tell them what time it is. I better get off of here. But I'm going to finish working on this as long as Nipsey wants. I think he has something else to tell me. Because that bothered me what he told me about the party and the people that are hanging around. And uh, mentioned Grandma. And, hmm. I'm really concerned about that. But I know they're protecting her. Uh, to make sure she's the she's the oracle. She's very spiritual, very divine. Something in there going too crazy. Look, I'm not interested in that burger. I think something in it. They go, yeah, it is. That's why I don't touch them anymore. <sighs> I'll be back soon, you all. I, I thank you for supporting me and loving me, and and having having my back. Thank you. It means everything to me. Y'all treat me better than my own blood family. I thank you for, for y'all being here, loving me, and supporting me. And so I'm going to keep coming back like you asked me. Every time Nipsey brings me something, I'm going to bring it directly to you and share it with you. And I love your feedback and y'all support. So y'all click like on it, share it. I know it was kind of far out and wild, but I still wanted to, to give it to you all. Oh, I'm getting hot. Okay, I'll talk to you in a few days, y'all. I love y'all. Bye.